This video is going to focus on biology and science related um, art lessons that are connected to the core content. If you are a science or biology teacher, you should probably partner up with your uh, art specialist in your building and they can help bridge that gap between the material use and the subject matter. If you're an art teacher looking to incorporate some more science into your program, this is the place you need to be. So this is a statement that I've made that's often quoted by others and I really believe that uh, through art we can learn all of the other subjects available to our students and enhance their understanding because they're really manipulating the elements and learning deeply about um, you know all of their subjects through art. So this lesson is for a altered book. The idea of this is that we take an old book from the library that's normally going to be thrown away and we chunk it together either with a stapler or duct taping pages or gluing things together to get multiple sections. So almost any lesson in science or biology where there's a step-by-step -step process can be broken down into the pages and students can do collage on the pages, they can do drawings on the pages, they can paint the pages. So there are many ways to kind of break up uh, a concept into its parts and then they can create uh, essentially something that's a, a work of art, you know, a collective piece, um, which can be fun. You can even have students work in groups and each one kind of focus on a different section in the book. Um, for biology, here's this one, and we have a pattern and an animal. So I use this um, when we're studying cultures, but this can also be applied to uh, biology and animals. So we can have the animal or endangered species and then a symbol that can kind of represent where the animal is from or perhaps the food that it relies on as a pattern. So putting these two together come up with a very striking sort of image. Another one is just using an old shoe and recycling it. I have students turn them in for uh, extra credit. We paint them white and then go ahead and paint right in them. So we can walk through science or biology concepts by painting or drawing right on the shoes. If you use a, uh, a white paint that is flat, you can actually draw right on it. So this can be kind of fun. It will grab their attention. And um, again, uh, the shoe can be followed up with any kind of um, you know, biology. You can show the, uh, the biome where an animal would live and you know, really have some fun with that. Or again, a science concept can be illustrated that way. Clay is a wonderful way to connect with um, science and particularly chemistry. Uh, the chemistry of clay, you know, how it's a composite of silica and other elements that give it its color. Um, these can all be broken down and talked about. Um, the platelets and how they slide across each other to create this plastic body that can then be fired and vitrified. There's a lot of wonderful uh, vocabulary that's involved in ceramics. Uh, and then you can get into the glazes, the temperatures, at what temperature things happen at. And then there's lots that can be done with um, weighing out the clay bodies, um, figuring out percentages of water, weighing something before it's fired, after it's fired, checking on the percentages of shrinkage that are in there. So there's even some math in there that I'll talk about in that other video. This next one is a pinhole camera. And pinhole cameras can be made by any light tight box. And that can be a lot of fun to explore the early development of film. You can find old black and white um, film and that can be cut up and put inside of the tin and I will have links in the description below to a lesson that I've done on this. But black and white film can actually produce a color image because of the way this is done. And um, I'll show you an example here of uh, the photo that was taken with that camera right there. Here's another one playing again with this idea of pattern. So we have an animal and we have its environment in the pattern behind it. So this is done through printing on foam plates, similar to the packaging that meat comes in. Um, and your art teacher will definitely be familiar with this process. Um, here we have done a double colored print on the animal and a double colored print on the background to create these um, striking images. And then I would have students um, write about the work and pair that up uh, with their um, with their artwork to display so we can see what it is that they've learned and uh, through the process. Here's a fun one for talking about collage. So we have this young lady here who has taken a baseball card and painted out the player. We camouflaged him uh, by painting in the, um, the background into the foreground to make the player disappear and we learn about color mixing and textures and all sorts of things to kind of make this happen and see how difficult it is to really achieve convincing uh, camouflage. 
So this can be done with old sports cards. You know, you give it some white out first and then you go in with color and we can have a lot of fun with it. Also with playing cards, you can create a playing card for a famous biologist or scientist and then put the facts and discoveries on the back of the card and create trading cards. Um, put all the names in a hat, have the students pick the names and then go ahead and start um, you know, researching and pulling together uh, your trading card. Here's another one for biology and um, we could take the idea of the skeleton. What would the skeleton look like for one of their favorite cartoon characters? So we can go ahead and print it out and then I take some old overhead transparencies and put that on top of the image and then we use a skeleton as an example and figure out what would the bone structure be underneath it. You know, form equals function and it becomes really important and fun for them to kind of do. Here we've used the basis of cells and pollen to create sculptures like this and like this and like this. And when we put them on display, we always like to put the uh, image of the actual one like this next to the artwork. And then the students also will do some writing about what they have discovered about the cells. So this can be a fun way to kind of work in three dimensions. Your art teacher will certainly be able to help you with that and plaster and come up with some uh, wonderful striking works of sculptural art. Uh, my students went back and looked at the um, how the virus or cell can affect the body and then we had a color chart to kind of talk about how um, green would represent nausea, red would re represent um, bleeding. Um, so all of these kinds of things can then also be shown through the color and students making choices on that level. Here we have a sculpture that's based on coral and creating a coral reef doing some origami fish. That can be a lot of fun to kind of pull together with the students. You can see this student is awfully happy with his work. So if you are exploring coral reefs and what's going on with those, then this might be a fun lesson for you. Origami fish are very easy to do. Um, they balance very easily on the, the, the top of the actual fish and they can be tied with fishing line onto a plaster form which they can then be painted. Again, your art teacher has the know-how to make this happen. Here we have what I call a face map and talking about proportion and in biology you might be talking about human proportions, how big one thing is to another and comparing those proportions and then maybe even looking at um, different sort of genetic disorders and how that can kind of affect um, the face and the facial structure and those proportions. So it might be interesting to draw oneself with another um, genetic disorder. You can pick out of a hat and then play around with the, um, the features and see how that might affect how you look. Another one here, we did um, drawings of decay. So each day the student would draw a flower um, that was put away at the end of the day and pulled out the next day and showing how it decays through the process. Uh, I believe here we got six days and you could go on for quite a while until it's nothing more than a brown blob on the paper. Um, this can be a fun way to kind of explore uh, different ideas of change over time. Another one that I've done is I have students tie a string onto a branch uh, with colored yarn so everyone's got kind of a different color. That way they can go out, draw the branch um, so they get their own branch and you can see things emerge in the spring or decay in the fall and that can be a lot of fun. Here uh, with science we can talk about um, fractals and there are definitely fractals that are happening in crystal sculpture, uh, crystal structures, um, but also in certain plants. Um, so we've done this through acrylic straws in this one. You can also explore the concept with a wire tree like I have here. Um, if things branch off, um, you can kind of do the twisting of the branches, branch it off, twist again, branch off and twist. So each part looks like the whole. Um, if you want to do it on uh, a base three, you can count up your wires and you get 81. That will divide by three very easily. Uh, and then 56, you can have two base pairs and that will also work very well um, if you wanted to show fractals and how they occur in nature. Um, here's some more crystalline sculptures that I do with um, acrylic straws. They're available through Nazco and other companies and we use uh, pipe cleaners twisted into little X's and create different structures. So sometimes I'll have students make them individually like this young man, but sometimes we'll work together and make a larger sculpture um, that can go display in a, um, an atrium of our building or outside. Here's another one where we're playing with uh, form and function. So I've got a hummingbird silhouette and then we've cut out the belly and put what the insides might look like. 
or we can reverse the idea like with this shark and we have the shark and then what is its environment inside the shark. This other one is a llama, same kind of concept with a little cutaway and then putting inside what the insides of the animal might look like. So this would take a little bit of research but we can have a lot of fun with it. Here's a comic book cover uh, blank. So this shows the students what is needed on a comic book cover from title, logo, subtitle, and main action. And we can take a science concept or um, you know, even a scientist and create a comic book cover and show off something that's kind of important. If you want to do some of the inside pages, that can be a lot of fun too. This is a lenticular. Hopefully I can get the video to play up here. And we can see that we can incorporate two images into each other. And then if you have an example of an actual lenticular where the design changes flipping left and right, uh, perhaps you can show that to the students. But we can get an idea of how that works in a very simple method like this. Comic strips are another way that we can talk about um, science concepts. This one is the birth of the universe. There's a character that narrates the little story and we go through several panels to uh, understand that particular concept. This other one is a fold-up uh, comic or you know a page. You can show um, change over nine panels and I'll see if we can get the video to play up here. And you can see that by unrolling one part after another, um, we can have like a little story unfold or we can have a concept unfold. So it's a fun way to kind of show um, movement without actually having to animate. There's another idea, interview with a dead blank. I've done it as an art teacher, as interview with a dead artist where students write reports in the first person as though they are interviewing a famous artist from history. But this could also be done for famous biologists and scientists. You give the kids a certain uh, list of questions that you need answered. I give them 50 questions that can be answered and they have to do it in about two pages. So they can't use all the questions, but uh, to give them enough so that they can find some way to kind of uh, complete the report. And it's kind of fun to kind of throw in the zombie in there and it just makes it kind of interesting. So, you know, they could have Louis Pasteur, you know, interview with Louis Pasteur as a zombie um, and they kind of have a kick with it and then they're also learning an awful lot. Here we have um, flower, um, flower prints that are done with a hammer. We've got a little video playing here. And we can see that the color will transfer uh, by using a hammer through a piece of paper and we're transferring the pigment onto paper and then we can actually see how the color will change with decay. So there's some concepts there that might be interesting to explore. You can also print leaves for our elementary students and then look at the structure, look at the veins, maybe even labeling the parts of a leaf. That may be desirable. In this other one we have these uh, lollipops and uh, we document change over time. So as an art project, I give my students a lollipop and they have to uh, lick the lollipop for a while and then draw it, lick it some more, draw it until we get down to the stick. So there may be some other concepts in the science or biology classroom that we can play with and show change over time, which I think is kind of an important concept to understand. Uh, here through origami, you can learn about molecules by making the different parts and then putting the molecules together to build other molecules. Um, so origami, uh, units origami is a great way to kind of explore these kinds of ideas and there is lots of YouTube tutorials out there to kind of help you with this. We talked about facial proportions before but certainly we can talk about human proportions and sometimes I will have my students draw each other. I'll put out some costumes and they kind of have some fun posing uh, and then the other students are drawing so that we get this idea of a human being being eight heads high, um, two heads to the knee, two more heads to the hips, um, you know, and by playing with one versus the other and kind of understanding how one proportion leads to another uh, can be an interesting concept and they have some fun doing that. This last one is going to be some wind sculptures that we created with uh, my art students and we did this through recycled materials. These can be done very small or very large. So um, we did these through some scraps that were collected over the course of a month. Uh, students had to bring in you know, three items and save them from the trash and then we turned them into these uh, wind sculptures and displayed them around the campus. I'm sure there's going to be lots of other fun ideas that are out there and I would certainly encourage you to uh, comment below. I'll let you know that um, I do have two books out that would be really helpful if you're into biology. So I have 
if Picasso went to the sea. Um, in here I have different poems um, that describe animals. And so here we have uh, the Rubens um, fish. So if Peter Paul Rubens went to the sea, is this the painting he'd make for me? Rubens like painting chubby cheeked folks, babies and ladies and muscular blokes. This cherub is like a baby with wings. With a rosefish, he waves and he sings. Rosefish are bony and not very nice. They hide and they bite without thinking twice. The scaly sea creature is found rather deep. Predator fish, they prowl and they creep. So each poem teaches a little bit about um, the fish. And we can see a little seashell there. And the color of the seashell tells us whether the animal is thriving, threatened, endangered, or extinct. And learn a little bit about some art history. Oh my gosh, that was kind of fun. Um, but each page will have a different artist. Um, we have men and women equally represented through here and different forms of art, um, you know, painting, drawing, sculpture, ceramics, and all of that. Uh, if you want to get a class set, we have a special price available if you just kind of contact me, um, you know, through my blog at artedguru.com. If you like more land-based animals, we have If Picasso Went to the Zoo and the same idea. Um, we have animals represented. This is a Nepanyaho uh, newt. So she was a very famous um, uh, ceramicist. And we can see that some of the newts are extinct with the brown and some of them are doing fine with the green. And the poem teaches a little bit about the animal, kind of where it's from and about the artist that made it. So again, these are fun uh, as a way to kind of introduce kids to um, sea creatures and land animals and then they can kind of explore on their own. Uh, and if each one picks a different one to kind of learn about, then they can do a little show and tell and we learn about a lot more things instead of focusing on just one animal for everybody. Everyone can learn about something different. So again, thank you again for watching. Go ahead and like and subscribe and check out some of my other videos in this playlist and see some different connections that art can be uh, connected to. Thank you.